Hey, Instagram, happy Friday. How is it Friday again? I'm not sure. The weeks are flying by. I'm out on a hike, and I think I'm going to try to do a quick live about being on call. And while people hop on, I'll keep walking. Uh, I only have one dog this morning. My other dog is being punished, for lack of a better word, and may find a new home. So with the dog I've got, Sweet Raven, I can probably manage walking and talking since she's not quite so ornery as the other one. Um, but yeah, quick roomy update. He is growing so fast. I don't think all of my babies have gained as well as he is and has. And he's just an absolute joy. He's calm. He's easy. Whatever that means. I guess to me that means that he doesn't fuss a whole lot. He kind of sleeps when you expect him to sleep. <laughs> he's happy and awake when you expect him to be awake. So he's an absolute dream. And that actually does lead into the topic of being back on call because he's a huge part of it. Got to take him with me. And so, you know, before he was born, I knew that this time would be coming and I'd have a baby and just wondering, you know, what kind of personality he would be, if he'd be sort of easy to tote along. I guess I don't actually know that, but my guess is he'll be fairly easy to take with me. So today, this morning, marks being back on call, which is such a funny phrase, really, but I think you all know what I mean. Um, but I wanted to just talk more about that, since it feels like a big milestone. And, you know, I got a solid month after Rumi was born, which is what I wanted, and what I've had in the past, and what I know works for me. And I guess I'm just grateful <laughs> that it, it does seem to be working, that I am feeling healed. Um, it was kind of a rough few weeks right after he was born, as many of you were witness to here, just some breast infections and blah, blah, blah. Um, but none of that has happened in a while. And I'm actually completely done bleeding, which also feels really good. I think that's one of those markers that... I haven't ever thought super consciously about, but yet is a thing. Like there's just something about when you're still bleeding postpartum to maybe not be back in the world yet. So my body seems to have healed really well. In a month out, I'm feeling good and ready to attend these mamas who I am shocked haven't had their babies yet. And I'm feeling grateful for that too, because truth be told, I didn't want to miss these births. You know, if you're one of these ladies listening, I love you. I love you so much and your babies. And it was, you know, sort of selfishly going to break my heart if I didn't get to be there. Um, but, you know, we don't control all the things. And I've had really good support, uh, a backup midwife, friend, former student that came into town to cover the last few weeks while I was really healing. And I'm so grateful for that. It gave me the the freedom to really heal. Um and I had to have the discipline, you know, too, to commit to that. Like in the weeks I was healing, I wasn't going to pick up the phone as much as I do love these women. I needed to heal. And I think that's really important for people to see, too, you know. So I feel like I had pretty good boundaries around the time I needed. I was well supported. And now I'm back and nobody has had their baby. So it could be a really interesting I don't know, next weekend, next week, next two weeks. I don't really know, of course. I never know. Um, as much as you might think a midwife could predict births, I sure can't. I'm the worst at it. In fact, a couple of these ladies have the history of having babies a little bit early. So I think they're more shocked than I am that they've made it to a due date. Um, although I always say there's no reason people shouldn't make it to a due date or very close when they're healthy. So I'm not really surprised. And, you know, it would have been irresponsible to not have backup while I was resting, even though, you know, I didn't necessarily expect anyone to birth. Um, of course, they would have, right, had I not made the plans. So 
yeah, that's the drill. That's what's happening. Um, if you have any questions about being on call or what that's like, you should let me know because I'm here live and it's a lifestyle I've lived for, you know, 16 years, of course, on and off. There's certainly times when we're not on call, very few times, vacations and after birth times. Um, but it is such a lifestyle. It's not really just a thing. It encompasses so much more than being available and looking at your phone. It encompasses, you know, not going too far out of the area. Um, it encompasses, yeah, just taking into consideration all of your plans and really all of the plans of your family. And being ready with a baby is a whole new thing. Not to me, but, um, you know, it's going to be a new thing for Rumi. And I totally respect that. So, you know, just stuff wise, right? I have to have all my birth stuff, which is already in the car and ready to go. And then I need all his stuff, whatever he might need, tons of diapers, um, change of clothes, and then just the couple things that, you know, if I need to get him to sleep, which I probably will. So he likes to be wrapped up in a special blankie. Um, and I probably need to bring kind of like a larger blanket if I need to put him down on the floor or get him to sleep on the floor. Uh, so, you know, things like that, that I wouldn't normally be thinking, I'm thinking, and I should get that stuff packed up this morning, actually, just to have it ready. So I don't have to think about it when the time comes. Um, let's see, in 16 years of attending births, I've never had or been witness to, you know, two babies being born at the same time in different homes. Uh, there was a time way back in my apprenticeship where we had two people, you know, in the birth process. And I think we split up for a while, but then we both wound up at both births. So, you know, I always tell people it's pretty rare for people to be birthing at the same time. But anything could happen. And of course, like I said, I have no idea. Uh, but I do have some good backup help here that is um, arriving today. A friend that already lives in this area. So she's just coming back home. And so we'll have some extra support if we need it, which is really cool. Raven, you're all tangled up in your leash. What's up with that? So yeah, that's what's happening in... I'm super excited. I feel like I got the time, like I said, and also have been putting in a fair amount of time just trying to stay grounded. Um, and that's a whole other aspect, I think, of being on call is just self-care. And I'm probably not going to go into all that right now, but I've been, you know, self-caring, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, um, as a way of life lately. So it's kind of good that I just had a baby. I've been forced to really take care of myself, to sleep, to rest, um, to not overdo things. And that's part of the on-call life too, you know, just keeping yourself well and healthy and rested and grounded. Those things all go together. So we'll see how the next little bit plays out. Um, super excited for these babies coming Earthside. It's kind of unbelievable in a way that these ladies are ready to birth. Um, obviously, we were pregnant together for much of the time. And, you know, it's just surreal in a sense to have birthed my own baby, to be on the other side of that, um, to have learned so much. And just, you know, as far as being a midwife goes, um, you never stop learning. And my births have been the biggest teachers. So as I'm still processing my own experience in a lot of ways, I'm wondering, come on, just what kind of changes that has made to me as a midwife? You know, I kind of get to test that out. Just, I know things are different. Um, every time I've had a baby, you know, you're kind of a new person as I've shared and it shifts your, your ideas. And you, you know, I have a new experience now to add to the collection. So we'll see kind of how that feels and how, how it all works out. Uh, but that's it for me this morning. I decided to do this video first, just cause my service is kind of bad as I get into this hike. So gonna quit here and take some quiet time and get into the hike. And of course, wish me 
luck, wish Rumi luck, wish all these beautiful mamas a beautiful birth in the next little bit. Um, I firmly believe and always have that, you know, whoever's meant to be there will be there. And once in a while, it's not us either. You know, babies come fast or whatever. Who knows why the timing or the personnel would work out the way it does. But I firmly believe it. It has never, never, never been wrong or prove me wrong. Um, babies decide who they want there, where they want to be born. They decide all of it. So I think Rumi has taught me um, even a more profound respect for that concept. It's not imaginary. And although we like to think we can manifest lots of things, we don't ultimately have the control um, the way we think we do. And this is a perfect example. So I am holding space for whatever needs to happen with, you know, life and birth and trust that um, I will have the privilege of being witnessed, um, not being witnessed, of being the witness, being a witness, if that's how it's supposed to be. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. The world is an exciting, beautiful place uh, right now and always. And I hope you're feeling that too on this gorgeous Friday. So as always, lots of love here from Sedona. Um, may you have a beautiful day and that's all. Talk to you later.